Let's bring on the man who called a lot of LT's famous moments, Josh Lewin. Josh, good morning, pal. Hey, Nicholas. What's happening, buddy? We're doing quite well. Kind of rehashing some of these LT memories. The fans have weighed in on their greatest moments watching LT or mingling with him out at malls or wherever they came across from him. You called a lot of LT's greatest moments in the prime of his career. Which one of those sticks out to you? And what's your off-field LT favorite moment? Well, I, I'm a big electric light guy. <laughs> my, 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 we just my played it, Josh. Was, my son was really little when that came out, and when he was like, gosh, maybe seven or eight, I mean, he was doing the electric glide around Dallas, Texas. People looked at him like he was nuts. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, the off-field stuff, I mean, from the OG's commercials to, to that kind of stuff, where when he finally started to, to open up a little bit, I mean, Nick, you know this better than anybody. He's a shy guy. He know? is, yes. Small town, small town Texas, and, you know, he, to see him now, on NFL Network and, and, you know, kind of glad-handing and just making himself out there like that is a very different side of LT. He's really grown in that regard. But in terms of the on-field stuff, I know everybody, you know, especially who was there to watch him break that single-season touchdown record, that obviously was really cool. And we got to thank Jay Cutler for that. He's the guy that, that fumbled it on the 13th with about three minutes to go. If Merriman had, in fact, Cutler and Cutler had to cough it up, and we all would have had to wait another week. And uh, that was a great moment. The, the overtime touchdowns in Washington and in Nashville, I mean, those certainly pop up. And, uh, they, you know, but I don't know about you guys. They all kind of kind of blend together after a while, too, you know. It's just like one big amalgam of greatness. It, it, it's tough to just pick out one moment or two moments after a while. Josh, when you're heading into a game where you know potentially you may have a record-breaking call, how much thought do you put into how you want to say it, or how much do you just leave it alone and do what you do so well and just react in the moment? Well, I, I think you have to just react in the moment. You can't script anything, and I, I hope that the moments were covered okay. I mean, I think the only thing that goes through your mind is don't F it up, you know, because you, you know this stuff's going to live, live forever, and you don't want to be – tripping all over yourself so uh, I think you just kind of let it happen organically and you follow the football and, and follow what happens after that and he gave me so many great moments and you know Nick you were on the field at that time but uh, you know Hank Bauer and I when, when that was the, the broadcast team you know, I think the two of us sometimes just kind of look at each other with our jaws open when we see him do something like that that really just happened and, and it was a real privilege to be able to describe it to everybody. So I'm on the field, and for the record-breaking run against the Denver Broncos, my only thought is, Nick, don't mess this up. You're having the exact same thought up in the booth? Oh, yeah. No, I think that because you know that, you know that LT is going to stick it. I mean, there's just no question. As soon as you guys got the ball back on the 13, it was just a matter of time. It was whether he was going to run in from 13 or run in from 7 or run in from 2. But, you know, he knew he was going to get the ball. And, yeah, just like you, I'm sure, didn't want to take some stupid holding penalty to put you guys back to where you can't get it to LT. I think that's the only thought we had in the booth was just just cover it, just relax, let LT do the heavy lifting, which he always did so well. Josh, we had a really simplified offense when LT was cranking. Could you predict what we were going to run before we ran it when you're looking down from the press box? And how did that oppose to what you saw in later years when Phillip really started taking over the team? That's a that's a great question, Nick. Because you're right. There, you guys would run that 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 run play to the left side so often and so well. You just kind of knew it was coming, and you knew the other team couldn't stop it. And you could kind of dial it up. And and even when you guys started doing the wacky stuff with with LT as the quarterback, you could almost sniff it. Like, okay, you know, it's been a while. They haven't broken this one out in two or three weeks, and you know, you you, you kind of get a sense of it, but. Yeah, over the last few years, it's just seemed like improv theater, you know, where Philip is running for his life and just it kind of became more schoolyard football. And, and thank goodness Philip had the wherewithal to, to sometimes make the magic, but sometimes he didn't. You know, sometimes he'd throw it to Kiko Alonso and the game is over. So uh, it was a simpler time back then, for sure. You guys had about, I would say, five or six set plays that, that, that I could could tell from up up on top that you know you, you just kind of get a sense that, okay this is a, a pretty good time to just put it in the hands of lt or 
you know, here comes Darren Sproles in space or stuff like that. And, uh, you know, but, but you got to have the personnel to make that work. You guys were much more predictable back then, but obviously you were able to get it done every time. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't have worked out. Josh, thanks for the time. We know you're limited on it today, getting ready for the Mets-Rockies game coming up later this afternoon. Good luck on the call. No worries, brother. Talk to you guys soon.